In this section, I'm going to describe how to mount, install, and operate these Interfit S1 flash monolights. It's pretty simple. To start with, we need to mount them. This is a Manfrotto super clamp. This will connect this arm to the table. Uh, it's a very simple clamp. It opens and closes like you would expect. It has a release button here that allows us to put the flexible arm into it. I'll demonstrate that when I mount it. And it has a securing bolt that will secure the arm into the socket. Now this arm is what they call a magic arm. It's also made by Manfrotto. It has a release knob here. This knob releases the arm this way. It also releases the ball and socket joints on each end. When I tighten this arm up, it not only locks the center, but it locks both the ends as well. So when we start, both of these ends, they're like a cylinder on the end with two shoulders, and they have a flat spot. Right there on the shaft, there's a little flat spot. That coincides with the bolt so that when the arm is mounted into the clamp and the bolt is tightened, there's no way the thing can twist and spin. So I'll show you how to mount these. They're pretty simple. You open it up, obviously, to the size bigger than your table. The perfect table thickness is about 3.5 centimeters, or an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to put it on my table here, and I'm going to clamp it down. And I'm not going to be gentle, I'm really torquing it down hard. I'm going to take the arm, and I've located the flat spot. It's here. It's pointing forward to line up with this bolt. I press the pin. It drops into place. I screw the bolt in. It finds home, and that's it. Now, as I loosen this, I can move it wherever I want. I can tighten it up, and it stays right where I put it. Now I'm ready to mount the flash head. And it's going to be the same affair. It has a flat spot here and a socket on the flash head with a bolt. So here's the socket. Here's the bolt. Here's our Interfit S1 flash head. So here's my flat spot. It's facing me. So what I need to do is turn the flash head to where the bolt is there. It slides down over the top. It screws on. And you can actually feel it like center the flash head on when the bolt meets that flat. It, it locks it in. So now I can turn this around, rotate it where I need to, lock it in position, and it stays put. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the reflector on the front. So I'm going to move this up here so where you can see it. And I'll stabilize it by, by clamping down the arm. Well, the other thing I want to mention too, I don't know if you noticed, but when I'm supporting this, I am holding this flash head by the head itself. I'm not holding the arm. Because if I loosen this handle, like I said, all three points become loose. So if I wasn't supporting the flash head, it would fall over. So it's really important to grab this by the head when you're moving it around and then tighten your arm down. It has a cover on the front of the flash tube to release the cover. You pull back on the release and just comes right off. It's held on by three, a three pin mount. This is called a Bowens mount. It's a very common studio flash mount. There are lots of accessories that are made for the Bowens mounting. I'm going to turn it to you so you can see it. So I can see it. There. So you simply line up the three keys. Push it in and give it a, a, a tiny bit of a turn. It clicks and locks into place. Now the reflector is there. Without the reflector, the light would be spread out all over the room. So this reflector is your first light modifier. And what it's going to do is it's going to focus the light. Before we get into the operation of this, there are two ways you can power this light. One of them, it has a battery, a lithium-ion battery, rechargeable, and you have the charger for it. This has a battery indicator. You press the button and it shows you what the power is on the battery. It's right now it's semi, it's a full charge. They simply drop into the light and that's it. And now you can turn it on and the light's powered. Now this light with the battery alone is advertised to give you 350 full power flashes. 
The fact is when we're shooting in a, in a copy stand mode like this, we're barely using a tenth of the power. So I have, I have actually photographed for two days on just nothing but battery charge. I don't normally use the batteries in a copy stand mode because we're dedicated to a countertop and we can have the luxury of wiring this into the wall. If I were going on location where I wasn't going to be in my lab, I'd take the batteries and I'd shoot with them. But for your purposes, you're not going to use them, so we'll leave them out. What you will do is you're going to connect this. Now, they come with a basically a power brick with a, a, a cord that goes to the flash head and a cord that goes to the mains. Your cord will have an adapter onto it. It's a G4 plug to fit into the Malaysian power. So there's no problem there. They are 110, 240. They'll work anywhere in the world, so you don't have to worry about that. On the side of the, of the light, it has a, a place where you're going to put your power cord. It's covered with a little dust cap. You simply remove the dust cap and it exposes the four pin connector. The plug that goes into the flash head is for, has a receptacle for four pins and it has a little pin on the bottom. This can only go in one way. It cannot be put in the wrong way. So you put it in, you twist it, you push it in, and you twist a little connector a quarter turn, and that locks this socket into place. Now what I like to do, I like to, I'm gonna grab my Velcro here, it slipped down to the floor. I like to put the Velcro around it to keep it neat and tidy out of my way. I don't like wires dangling, so I'll just, I'll give it a little bit of slack here, so I'm not binding anything. And then I'll just wrap the Velcro, binding the wire to my arm. I have another strip of Velcro down here. You can never have enough Velcro in the studio. It's handy for everything. So I'll tie a little piece here. and just keeps things neat and clean. And now, when I'm moving this around, I don't have a wire following me somewhere. Another thing, there's another adjustment on this head that I need to show you, and that's this arm here. What this does is if you loosen this, you can now tip the flash head in addition to all the other ways you can move it. So there's really no way that you can't arrange this light. Once you tighten this adjustment here, if you find that for any reason this knob is in your way, it's a ratchet, so you pull it out, turn it, and reposition it so that it's not in, in, your, in your direct way. That's it for mounting the S1s. The next thing we're going to do is discuss the operation. Now for the good stuff. We're going to talk about how to actually operate these Interfit S1 500 watt second mono lamps. They're fantastic. They're very, very consistent and very powerful. Here's how it goes. We're running this on AC power. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flick the on off switch to AC, which will turn it on. You hear a single beep and the display will come up showing you all kinds of wonderful things. This is pretty simple. The first button on the left hand side is the modeling lamp. And what the modeling lamp is, is it's a constant light source. This particular one uses an LED, which is really nice because it's daylight balanced and it's cold light. You don't have the hot light of a tungsten lamp, which is a typical studio flash. When you turn on the modeling lamp for the first time, it gives 50% output. The second click is 100% output, and the third click is off. So I'm gonna put it at 100%. Now what it does is, it shows me where my flash is going to land. So if I wanna create shadows or highlights, the modeling lamp shows me where it's going to be. So when I move my light around, this is exactly where my flash is going to fire. That's the, how you know what you're shooting. So the modeling light is here. It's very simple. You can also, and we'll get into the remote later, but you can also control the modeling lamp from the remote control unit. So the modeling lamp is now off. The next thing is the channel button. Now you have channels and you have groups and basically they do the same thing. The best way to describe this is if I were at an event like a wedding and there were two photographers, each one would want his own personal channel. So if I'm on channel one and he's on channel two and I'm firing, my remote will not trigger his flash. 
But if he was on channel one and I was on channel one and I fired my flash, his would go off too. So you have separate channels to give you different identities. You won't be using that because you're it. There's only one of you and you're gonna be shooting here. Now groups are dedicated to each channel. Let's say I've got three lights. I can decide what group I'm gonna be in. It's either A, B, or C. There are three possible groups. The remote will control each flash differently. It'll, it'll control A, B, or C independently. So if I wanted to have one light at 100% and one light at 25% and one light at 50%, I may change, I may set them to be different groups. But because we're shooting in what we're calling a copy stand affair is that we're gonna be shooting with two lights and we primarily want them to be the same. So we're gonna keep it on group A. So it's channel one, group A. Each light is channel one, group A. This way when you fire the lights, both lights fire as a single light and that keeps everything consistent. There's a beep button and the beep is okay. Now, if I have the beep on, which I just turned it on, Every time I fire the flash, it will beep when it's reached full recycle, when it's ready to shoot again. That's great if you're in a studio and you don't have access to looking at your flash, but you're photographing and you want to know the flash is recycled and it's ready to shoot again. But I'll tell you from experience, when you're shooting stacks at 100 a time, that becomes annoying very quickly. So to turn the beep off, you turn it off, and now it doesn't beep when you recycle the flash. That is also controllable on your remote. Another thing that's controllable on your remote is the cell. And we want the cell to be off. What this is, is it's a photo cell. And if I have my photo cell on, see this little pickup here on the top of the flash head? This is a photo cell. Now, if I have another flash in the room, like a Canon flash or a speed light, and I fire it and I have cell on, this light will pick up that flash and synchronize its output to that flash. It's a very cool tool so that you don't have to have a bunch of radio controlled remotes that all talk to each other. This can pick up any third party flash and fire. The reason you want it off is because there's a bright flash in the room, this light will take and trigger off. So always keep the cell off and it shows up here in the back of the, of the viewfinder there, in the back of the window. This is your test button. It's pretty obvious. You press the button to test the flash to make sure that it is in fact firing. And lastly, this button. This is a pretty cool feature. Now, as I'm turning this and I'm rotating it, you see the numbers change from 5.8, 6.4, I'm going up. I'm gonna go all the way to 10. 10 is full power. 10 is 500 watt seconds, a watt second is a way to measure how much light's coming out of this, how much power is coming out of this flash. This is an industry standard. So we're talking in watt seconds. So 500 watt seconds at 10. Now if I go down one F stop, let's say I'm shooting at, at F8 and I wanna shoot at F5, 6, that's one F stop different. One F stop is one unit. So nine, if I go to nine, that's one F stop lower. And one f-stop is half the power. So now I'm at 250 watt seconds. So if I go down to eight, where would I be? If you said 125 watt seconds, you'd be right because it's half of the previous f-stop. Now what's really cool about this light and why you're never gonna need neutral density filters or barn doors ever again is because when I go all the way down to two, I am at a whopping 1.9 out of 500 watt seconds. So this light can go down to almost nothing, but it can do it in one tenth of an f-stop increments, which in industry standards is a very, very fine adjustment. This literally allows you to paint with your light. So you can set each light slightly different, even though they're on, even though they're both uh, uh, group A, channel one, I can set this one at let's say four and the other one at 3.5. And yes, that will put out less light than this one, but they will both fire at the same time. So I recommend channel one, group A, and that's how these lights are gonna to ship to you. When we talk about the remote control, one of the options you'll have on this, and I'll get into this later, is TTL, through the lens metering, that's automatic. 
that means that the camera will read what it needs to fire and the flash will deliver what you need to get a good shot every time you don't have to be a photographer to get it right so we'll talk about the remote next but that's it for the for the s1s uh, again we're running this one on ac power when you're done at the end of the day you simply turn it off and that's all there is to it it's got a fan inside it keeps it cool so so no worries one other thing before we get into the remote if you remove this back knob, which I'll do just simply by pulling it straight off, it reveals a micro USB port. And what we can do now, we can plug in the a, a cable, plug this into your computer, and this is how you update the firmware on this. Now, on your PC, this has the latest firmware as of the point of delivery, but I put the, the firmware also on your computer and with the instructions uh, from the manual on how to up, update the firmware. It's important because Interfit constantly upgrades their firmware, which adds new features to the light. So it's nice to have those new features, but that's how you do the firmware. And when you're done, you simply put the knob back on and you're all finished.